The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. In the year 2000, Ben Heckendorn built his first mod. We can rebuild it. Smaller. Better. Portable. Since then, he has continued his work, helping those in need with creative new projects. If you've got an idea you'd like to see built, why not send it to The Ben Hack Show? The thing was, there were actually four lights, but he was trying to say there were three. Turf. Your turf? This is my turf, buddy. You wanna go, son? Where's your rig, pal? Tonight, game.hack5.org, Unreal Tournament 99. Please, I don't get out of bed in the morning for anything newer than Battlefield 3. We're going classic, Quake 3. I'll go Modern Warfare 2, final offer. <sighs> Alright, do mod. I live my life one mod at a time. For those two weeks or less, I'm free. Name your stakes. $200, mini ATX. $199, full ATX. Full ATX it is, Ben Heckin' Friends. I'll see you around, Daryl Kitchen Bar. Welcome back to the Ben Heck Show. We haven't been able to finish the Baby Rocker yet because we've been busy building the ultimate portable land computer to crush Darren of Hack 5. I ran into Darren and his minions at Maker Faire and he had the audacity to challenge me to a battle of the mod. Go to revision3.com forward slash vote to vote for me in the upcoming challenge. Let's get started crushing his dreams. I must break you. Now that we've decided to kick Darren's butt, I need to think of how to make a cool case in order to accomplish said butt kicking. The first thing we need to do is come up with a basic shape design for this case. Now I'm thinking that the case and the screen are all going to be built into one unit. So we draw out the screen here and then we draw how it relates to the case which holds the um, balance of the computer parts. And my thought is that the front of it will fold open kind of like our portable workbench and you can have a keyboard there. And then you can have an additional thing that will come out the side for the mouse. Then we'll also uh, draw a side view over here we think about where the LCD is going to be, then we think about where the motherboard is going to be, where a DVD drive might be, where the front lid might be, and how the keyboard will fold up into it. Because it's very important to think about um, the spatial issues, you know, everything has to fit together. We're also going to need, uh, you know, the DVD drive to come out the side like that. And uh, let me draw a uh, third view of it here. Uh, not the greatest um, perspective, but whatever. Then we think about where to put a big power supply, where to put the motherboard, and where to put a hard drive. You know, all these things are pretty necessary. And, uh, you know, maybe we can get a Wi-Fi module in there, I don't know. Okay, so here's the screen I picked out for our Hack 5 challenge. Now, he said that we had to make the case cost $200, so I will make the case out of $200 or less of materials, but as for the rest of it, you know, that's irrelevant. Asus, God of Thunder. Okay, so this is going to basically dictate the width of our unit. And um, it's probably a little wider than anything else will be, but if you think about it, it's about the width of a standard computer case. Okay, there's the vase amount. Yep. So what we can do is we can drive some metric screws into this. So instead of taking this all apart, we'll just make a bracket on our custom case that bolts right to this and it'll sit inside. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is scan this into the computer. Um, we've already done a sketch of how we wanna make our case, but now I have to actually mechanically figure out how to make it. So we're going to use a micro ATX motherboard for this project. Um, 
It's smaller than a full-size ACX. It's not super small, but it is like a full-size computer still. And I found this PDF online that has the measurements of it, the standard screw holes for that type of motherboard. So what I did was just using all of these dimensions, I went into Adobe Illustrator and I drew it all up so I can route it as a piece of aluminum to make a solid frame. This right here represents where the ports are going to be, like USB, uh, LAN, etc. There's a little bit of a divot here for the edge of the video card metal to stick down. And then you've just got the rest of your screw holes here for the motherboard. And these holes will actually attach it inside the case. All right, I've routed an aluminum base. And then in the back, I've put some extra nuts on with Loctite that the standoffs attach to. So it will be, you know, extra tough. And I've got a, what is this thing? A GeForce GTX 560 Ti. Should be a pretty decent uh, video card. We're gonna be using the HDMI output of it. So on the board here, this is going to be inside the case like this vertically. So then we've got this little adapter cable for the DVI, which will come in, plug in here and go up. So we need to make sure we have enough room for the cable. But we also need to make sure we can get at the USB and especially the LAN if you're at a LAN party. Of course you gotta to get to the LAN. So when this is in the case in relation to the screen, I think we can probably do some optimizations. We can, the screen, see how it has like a lip on it there? We can actually bring the screen up and have it sit above the video card like this, which will allow us to make the case a little bit smaller, but still give us room for all the components to breathe. And we're also going to be putting some big system fans in it too, so the air can be sucked through. And based off the drawing that we did earlier, thinking I'll have this inside like this and the keyboard will actually be under it and pull out. So then we're gonna have other things in it as well, such as a you know, DVD drive and a hard drive. But yeah, this is our base motherboard configuration. I think it worked out as a nice little package. All right, got some hot and spicy quesadillas. No, you were supposed to come up with case ideas. Well, I still would have eaten it. Here are all the computer parts that are going to go in the case. And I'm just putting windows on it right now, but we have a power supply, big video card, hard drive, DVD drive, and the monitor is gonna be in the case as well, as long as the keyboard and mouse. So these are the things we have to fit in the case. It, it's not too bad, but some of them things are, some things are gonna be a little ungainly. All the cords coming out of the power supply is gonna be a little ungainly. I uh, it was too cheap to get the modular one with the plugs. But yeah, I think we can uh, make something pretty cool out of this. But one other thing I want to try to do with the case design is, this isn't a laptop. And one thing that sucks about a laptop is you have to like scrunch over the screen like this, you know, because it's only, only so high. On a good PC at home or you've got a desk, I at least like to have the screen up high, like center eye level. So I think one cool thing, the screen, not only should it open up, but the screen should like a whoop, come out of the case so it's like the right eye level if you're playing at a desk. This is too low. I think it's too low. And I'm building this so I'm gonna make it the way I want to. If you're a fan of the Ben Heck Show, you may also be interested in seeing some of the work that Jerry Ellsworth has done for Element 14. As you may know, Jerry is my arch nemesis and we are currently locked in a pinball battle to the death. Only one of us will survive. Just like we do on this show, Jerry has been tackling all sorts of electronic challenges from Element 14 and their users. You can visit element14.com forward slash Jerry Ellsworth to check out her videos. In one of her videos, Jerry uses Cree LEDs to build a Wild West simulator like the old Hogan's Alley Nintendo game. In yet another video, Jerry and her cat Darlington use their genius for good, saving the Ben Heckendorn Laboratory from evil robots by building a software radio using sampling detectors and FPGA digital signal processing. And in Jerry's most popular video, she digs out her 80s clothes, puts on a pair of leg warmers, and shows us several ways to harvest energy by powering a Nintendo with an exercise bike. At element14.com forward slash Jerry Ellsworth, you can join in on the discussion with other Element 14 members and also ask Jerry questions directly herself. Jerry is recording more videos with Element 14 in the coming months, so go to element14.com forward slash Jerry Ellsworth to keep track of what she's doing. And now, back to the show. Okay, I think I'd like to make this case out of this PVC plastic called Sintra, but I don't really have enough of it to make a whole case. But I do have a lot of plywood laying around, so perhaps I could make it out of plywood, but then I'd have to have a reason for making it out of wood. So what kind of design could it have? 
Yes, I'll make it look like an old radio. It will be amazing. Darren won't have a chance. I will also watch American Pickers off Netflix the entire time and design it to ingrain old school design in my brain. <laughs> Decided we're gonna go with kind of a retro look for the case. Um, this being a gaming PC power supply, it had these blue LEDs in it because everything has blue LEDs. I'm actually swapping them out with some yellow LEDs to give kind of the impression or feel of vacuum tubes. So kind of like an old timey look. Yay! Oh yeah, rough that wood. Now to help make this look old, I'm going to add some artificial damage. You know, like this thing got moved, it's all bashed up, there's ticks in it. And when we stain it, this will cause the stain to seep into the crevices a little bit and give it kind of a variation in color. A push! It's a squid. It's, it's an electronic squid. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. Okay, Allison stained this. Looks pretty good. You can see how the parts that we battle damaged were darker with the stain, so it kind of makes it look like it's been around the block a few times. I'm routing most of the wood pieces for this um, case, and we need to do it in several steps. First, we're using an eighth inch bit to um, route some screw holes and also some mounting brackets because we have to make sure this piece stays on the machine. And what I'm gonna do now is switch from the eighth inch bit to the quarter inch bit. It's going to make some paths in the wood so that the roundover bit, which would be the third bit, can come over. See how it's got, this is, this is actually from Sears, so we have to make a little pre-indentation on it so this thing has enough room to do its job. So there's several steps to it, and we have to make sure the grain's going on the same direction that the wood doesn't flop around, but it should be worth it in the end. Master, it's alive! So here's the back frame for the LCD. It's got some rollers on it so I can go up and down in the case. And uh, we put in the visa mount. So I'm just gonna put these metric size four screws through. They'll bolt through this frame and into the built-in mount and then it'll, that's all we have to do basically. screen is now in place with this rear frame and the side frames and what we're going to do here is we're going to attach this white frame piece to this top lid so when you open up the lid the whole screen comes with it so I'm actually going to do something really cheap I'm going to just put some super glue on the top of this just to get the position right then we'll flip it open and drill screws through it all right so then we see where the white frame hits the top so we're going to make a mark just to double check it that is where it attaches. Okay, we're ready to mount the motherboard. So we've got this metal frame, and there's gonna be a plastic frame under it. Plastic frame is actually what's going to bolt inside the cabinet here. So yes, I will attach the motherboard to the plastic frame and then we'll bolt it inside the cabinet. My mind goes back to a girl I knew. Oh, I see some, it needs adjusting. All right, now the video card sticks out quite a ways, but there is an indentation here on the monitor. And according to my designs, the video card should slide behind that and they should both still fit. All right, I'm gonna see if I can use some longer screws on this hard drive. All threads are not created equal, but it appears like these screw holes on this hard drive are um, English, 
440 size threads, so interesting. Not all threads are created equal too. There's di different thread counts for English Imperial, and there's also different thread counts if it's a metric, so it's important that you keep track and use the right one for your project. Otherwise, you'll strip out your thread holes. So this is going to be our latch mechanism. It's going to fit in the back of the cabinet, and the idea is the screen will rest on this tab here, and that will what will hold it open. We have a spring inside, so you can push it in to allow the, the LCD to slide down, and this will push back out. I'll actually put just oops, stay in there. I'll put two springs in there just to make sure it works good. Although one would probably do it. Yeah, I'll save money. All right, so there's the tab that holds it in place. When you push that in. Screen can get on the rest of the way. Allegedly. <laughs> but he who illuminated this, illuminate me. So now we've finished our computer case mod. Our computer case mod that can transform. I like cars. Okay, okay, here we go. Okay, how do we do this? Okay, got latches? Okay, we got latches. Latches? Latches? Okay, no, open, open. Okay, whoa, no, 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 Okay, gotta get this out, gotta get this out. Whoa, no, 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 no. Oh, yes, we did it. It transformed. All right, well, here's the computer in its deployed form. Uh, I kind of tried to make it simulate a desktop. The keyboard is a good distance from the screen. Then if you look at the screen, if you're in a chair at a desk, the middle of the screen is basically where the middle of your eyes are, and so instead of hunching over a laptop, this is straight on. So that's the reason why we made this click up. And uh, you know, if we would have had some more time, we could have put a barrier in here for these things, but uh, right now we're just going to say it's air-cooled. Uh, yeah, so we've got a nice little computer here that we can use, and this is a Pentium i7. Uh, it's a pretty decent computer, and the video card's pretty good, so it uh, should be a pretty good gaming computer for someone. That's all the time we have for today. Don't forget to go to revision3.com forward slash vote to vote for my case. And for a chance to win it, go to element14.com forward slash tbhs to enter. In the next episode, we're going to reveal the baby rocker that runs off the Google ADK and also work on some devices for bike safety. We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash tbhs where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching.